Hello everybody. In this video lecture, we continue um, with chapter 19, blood vessels, and this is chapter 19, part 2. You can see that um, this material that I cover right now is relative to your lab section. I want to remind you that I can ask you about this material in your lab exam as well as in your lecture exam. So make sure you watch this video and you study the blood vessels that I am covering in this lecture. Okay, this first slide, you can see um, aorta, aortic arch. So let me just kind of very quickly, I'm going to draw here the heart. And this is the diagram of the heart. So that, of course, not anatomically correct. But if this is your heart, your heart can be divided into four chambers. So upper chambers are atria. Right, so that's atria. And here's ventricles. And um, this is the right side. And this is the left side. And on the left side, we have oxygenated blood, right? So here we have blood that rich in oxygen. On the right side, we have blood deoxygenated. So it's low in oxygen and rich in carbon dioxide. Now from here, from your left ventricle, we have blood vessel, like this blood vessel, right, that's called aorta. So that's actually what you see on, on this diagram. So that's the aorta. So aorta begins at the left ventricle. So this is ventricle. So left ventricle, this is where aorta starts. Okay, now let me remove all this stuff so it's not on our way. Now, um, this part, let me get a black one. This part is called ascending aorta because the blood vessel goes up. This part over here is called aortic arch. And then we have descending aorta that became thoracic aorta. And then later it will become abdominal aorta. So the first two branches from ascending aorta is this one and this one over here that is called right and left coronary arteries. Right and left coronary arteries supply myocardium of the heart. Uh, human aortic arch has three branches. So here's one, two, and three. Right. This one is called, on the right side, brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery. Then brachiocephalic artery, it's, it's a short blood vessel. Sometimes we call it brachiocephalic trunk, and trunk means short blood vessel. It will bifurcate into two vessels, right common carotid and right subclavian. Now look, this common carotid, right and left common carotid, they're going to deliver blood to your head and to your brain. Subclavian, right and left, subclavian arteries will deliver blood to your arms, right? So, so this is aorta that has three parts, ascending aorta, aortic arch, descending aorta, and major branches, 
right? Major branches from the aortic arch, that is brachiocephalic, left common carotid, and left subclavian. So on this diagram, you guys can see brachiocephalic trunk, right? It's blood vessel or brachiocephalic artery. And here where it's bifurcates into common carotid artery and subclavian artery. Now, common carotid brings blood to your head. And um, somewhere in this region, right where you have your thyroid cartilage, it bifurcates into external carotid and internal carotid. That's why we call it common carotid artery, because it wheels and bifurcates into external and internal carotid arteries. And external carotid arteries carry blood to your face, to your head, to those muscles and skin, and internal carotid artery carry blood to the brain. Um, you can see here another branch right here, and this is called vertebral artery. So that's another artery that carries blood to your brain. And we have right vertebral artery and left vertebral artery. So here, this is our uh, internal carotid arteries. So here's one and another one. Right, so that's the left, this is right, internal carotid. And here's our left and right vertebral arteries. So here's the arteries that bring blood to the brain. And then some of them bifurcate, some of them actually join together like vertebral arteries. They come together and they're forming this artery over here that is called basilar artery. And internal carotid artery um, has some branches, right? This is the major branches that you need to know. So this branch is over here, anterior cerebral artery. This branch is here, middle cerebral artery. And this branch over here, posterior cerebral artery. Okay, if you look at this diagram, we have, so here's our ascending aorta, aortic arch, descending aorta, thoracic aorta, right? And then it became abdominal aorta. And here's our three branches. So this is brachiocephalic, right? This is left common carotid. This is left subclavian. Now brachiocephalic divides into right common carotid and right subclavian, right? And we call it subclavian because it actually runs posterior to the clavicle. So it's kind of like posterior under the clavicle. And now we're going to change this name, right? It, it's the same blood vessel, but when we're moving down the arm, name will change. When it approaches axillary region, right here, we call it axillary artery. Now it's moving down, and we call it brachial artery. When your brachial artery reaches this area, anticubital area of your arm, it actually splits into radial artery and ulnar artery. And radial artery will be lateral and ulnar will be medial. And now when they when they get to your palm, they're forming this arch that's called a palmar arch. We have both. We have deep palmar arch and superficial palmar arch. And branching from those arches are digital arteries. Okay, on this diagram, where are we at? So this is the diaphragm, actually, right? So here's the diaphragm. So above, we have thoracic cavity, and below the diaphragm, we have abdominal cavity. 
right? And so over here, we would have our abdominal aorta. So this big, you know, blood vessel here, that's abdominal aorta. Um, and we do have several branches, right? So here's a small branch over here. It's called celiac trunk. Celiac trunk then divides into three blood vessels. This blood vessel over here is called common hepatic artery. Then we have blood vessel over here, left gastric. And this blood vessel is splenic. So common, common hepatic blood goes to the liver, right? And also like small intestine, but to the liver. Gastric, left gastric, blood goes to the stomach. And uh, splenic, blood goes to spleen. So because this is spleen. Okay, on this diagram again, this is our diaphragm, right? And here's our cephalic, I'm sorry, celiac trunk. This is our celiac trunk. Um, now, there is some arteries goes up and supply your diaphragm, and it's called inferior phrenic artery. Um, and then when we're moving down, you see we have many branches here, but only some of them you need to um, remember. Like this branch, it kind of coming towards you, and this branch also coming towards you. This is superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery. And do you guys hopefully remember what mesentery is? Mesentery is that serous membrane that um, keeps your small intestine together. So uh, superior and inferior mesenteric artery deliver blood to your gastrointestinal system and especially to your small and large intestine, right? So that's our superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric. And then you have this blood vessel that bring blood to your kidneys because that's your right kidney, left kidney, and this is renal artery. Okay, so here's our abdominal aorta, right? And uh, abdominal aorta then bifurcates into two blood vessels, and it will be right and left, common iliac. Right? So over here, we have right common iliac, and over here, we have left common iliac. Okay, so here's our abdominal aorta. This is our right common iliac, and then it splits into internal iliac and external iliac. An external iliac will deliver blood to your um, leg, right? So, so we would have external iliac moving down to your thigh, and it became femoral artery. And then uh, when it approaches um, this popliteal region, it becomes popliteal artery, and we will see it on the next slide. But on anterior view, you can also see anterior tibial artery. That's anterior tibial that reaches your um, metatarsal region here, right? And it became an um, arcuate artery. So that's an arcuate artery. And then we have dorsal metatarsal arteries. So on the posterior view, um, so here's our femoral, right? So femoral, and it comes to this popliteal region, and it's became popliteal artery. And then popliteal artery <coughs> divided into this branch that go to the front, and it will be anterior tibial. Here will be our posterior tibial. And this branch go to the lateral side, and became fibula artery, right? Because that's bone over here. That's your fibula. Now, posterior tibial artery moves all the way down to your plantar region and became medial and lateral plantar arteries, and they form plantar arch. Now, we are in a venous system now. So, for, for venous system, we will go from the periphery back to the heart, right? So we're gonna start from um, your feet. Um, and if you see some, some of these veins are used um, 
like this um, blue color and for some I use green color and it just to help you to remember that some veins, deep veins, they have the same names as corresponding arteries, but we also have some superficial veins and they have different names. So uh, in the green color, we have superficial veins. In the blue color, we have deep veins. All right, so we're going to start with the dorsal, metatarsal veins. Then we form dorsal venous arch. And we collect blood moving up, anterior tibial vein, right? It will be popliteal over here. Right? And then <clears throat> this is our great saphenous. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> this is our femoral, sorry, that's our femoral. So again, we have anterior tibial that uh, will be popliteal on the posterior side over here, and then femoral, and then we have external iliac, right? Uh, and this is our internal iliac, but now it's vein, and this is common iliac vein. And um, in the green color over here, you see this vein that's a superficial vein and it's called a great saphenous vein and on this side this is also superficial vein called small saphenous vein so that posterior view um, of the leg um, so uh, we already kind of follow this anterior tibial vein right so here it became popliteal and then femoral vein up go femoral vein and here we have more blood to pick up we start with digital veins they will have uh, palmar veins so here's our palmar posterior tibial right um fibular right so then they became popliteal and femoral and here you see our great saphenous and you can also see the small saphenous right here Okay, now we are in the abdominal cavity. So here's our external iliac vein, right? That's our internal iliac vein. So we're here, so external and internal. They come together forming common iliac. So that's a common iliac. And this big blood vessel over here, that's our inferior vena cava. So here's the name, inferior vena cava. And then we pick up all the blood from different organs and you only need to know this um, here are renal veins, right? So here's the renal veins that bring blood, blood back from the kidneys. And all these veins over here, hepatic veins, they're going to bring blood from the liver, right? And then over here, up to the heart. And this big vessel here that I show you, all this big vessel, right? All this big vessel, that's inferior vena cava. Uh, let me just, uh, so much mess over here. Okay, this is the blood coming back to the heart from um, head region. All right, so we have uh, our superficial temporal vein right here, facial vein, and uh, they all bring blood to this inter uh, internal jugular vein over here right and um, this is our external jugular external jugular that's internal jugular so here's the blood comes over here from the brain as well and here's our vertebral vein right in the middle so internal external jugular vertebral vein um, they come together forming um, this sub, subclavian, right, and then brachiocephalic. And brachiocephalic became superior vena cava, going down. This is blood um, that we collect from the brain. So this one is superior sagittal sinus. They also call it SSS. This is inferior sagittal sinus this part and this part called transverse sinuses. This one look like S, sigmoid sinus, 
and this one is cavernous sinus. So they all bring blood in the same blood vessel over here that is internal jugular. Right, so let's look over here. So we have our internal and external jugular. So this is our two veins, um, and then they come together forming brachiocephalic vein and then uh, inferior vena, as, as, I'm sorry, superior vena cava. And here's our inferior vena cava. Um, right, so this blood internal and external jugular bring blood from the head and your brain. Internal jugular going to bring blood from the um, pelvic organs, abdominal organs, right back to the heart. So heart will be located right here in this region. And then we're collecting blood from your uh, arm and forearm. You're going to start with digital veins, right? So here's the digital veins. Um, we have this, our superficial palmar arch. And um, then over here, uh, actually, you know, that's, that's in a color that's hard to see, but this blood vessel over here, this is radial vein. And this one is ulnar, right? And then they come together forming brachial. So that's a brachial. And brachial then became uh, axillary. And axillary became subclavian over here, right? And uh, why do we have so many other blood vessels here? Because I'm going to show you just in a second. Blood vessels are shown like kind of in a dark blue. Those are all superficial veins. And the blood vessels shown in this light blue, those are deep. So deep veins have the same name as arteries, right? We have radial vein and radial artery. Right? We have ulna vein and ulna artery. We have brachial vein and brachial artery. Then we have axillary vein and axillary artery. But everything shown here in dark blue, those are superficial veins, and we do not have corresponding arteries. So we have right here, right in the middle, right? We have, uh, because it's in the, in the middle, it's a median anti-brachial vein, right? Then we have over here this vein, and it's called median cubital vein. Also, this blood vessel that runs um, close, close to your body on the medial side, this is called um, basilic vein. And the one that runs on the lateral side, this one is called cephalic. And I'm kind of remember basilic starts with B, so it's close to your body. So it's close to the body. So it's a medial. And cephalic is lateral. Um, here we are actually collecting blood from your uh, large and small intestine and uh, also from the spleen, from the stomach, right? And um, so we have superior mesenteric vein, inferior mesenteric vein, right? So this one here, this one here. We, we have splenic, so come from the spleen. So here's your spleen. And we have gastric, and this is the stomach. And they all combine together in this point, forming hepatic portal vein. So hepatic portal vein brings blood to your liver, right? And then those are hepatic veins. And hepatic veins bring blood from the liver to this blood vessel here, that is inferior vena cava. Now, look, when you digest your food, right? So your food in the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, right? All this stuff, all this blood from your GI tract, from the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and from the spleen, first it goes to your liver. It goes to your liver for processing. And those blood vessels that bring blood to your liver are called hepatic portal veins. 
right? And then, well, your blood not gonna stay in the liver forever. So we have other blood vessel, right, to bring this blood to the inferior vena cava, right? So here's our anterior vena cava, and those are called hepatic veins. So those are portal, and this is just hepatic. 